So at this point, we've got the ability to view a comic completely, and then we've got to delete a comic. Next up, edit a comic. This one needs a lot of setup because this is sort of like if you think about it in a way, did you ever see the old Tom and Jerry cartoons where they run off to the edge of a plank at the uh, construction site? And then he starts to saw the plank, but he's on the part of the plank that when he saws it, he's going to fall. <laughs> That's something we kind of need to do here or think about because we want to change something we're standing on, so to speak. We want to change a comic. We're working with a comic, we're looking at a comic, and that's the comic we want to change. So we need to have sort of like a temporary version in memory of it so that then we can change it, so that then we can replace the original version. Because with, with Pouch, everything has a unique ID, right? And a unique ID has um, the unique ID is attached to everything. So mouse 22 here is MOU221999. Well, that unique ID, we're going to be able to change any aspect of this comic, which is name, number, year publisher, note. And these right here will be very easily changeable because MOU 22-1999 ID is linked to all of these. So we can change these very easily. Then the part that I'm saying about Tom and Jerry is that if we try to change the original ID, we're trying to change an ID that technically doesn't exist. An ID MOU 22-1999 that doesn't exist if this was actually Mighty Mouse number 21. So we're going to need to temporarily store a copy of the current comic to be able to change its ID and then replace the old version. PouchDB needs some sort of ID to keep track of it. So how would we save a unique ID that... What, character, what would it be based on? That? The UID the standards that they, that they use, and there are methods that you can use. Like, no, it has some that you could import and use, and it would give you a 128 character unique. But is it, how would that be tied directly to an individual comment? I don't think you would want it to be, right? I mean, you want the UI, UID that you use, to, or the ID, to be independent of that, because that's just a unique value that you're putting in the database to be able to uniquely retrieve that record. Unless you're using, are you building up then in order to retrieve the record? Are you reconstituting the ID to go get it out of the database? No, not reconstituting yeah. it, just, you're just doing the reference it. Yeah. We're going to do a dot .get, but then because we're going to need to replace if a person is choosing to replace you know, the deep values of this, the ID doesn't match up anymore. So a UUID might be a way to do it, sure. So what we're going to do then is make this edit button work. We, we're going to hit that button and then pop up some fields. OK, which of these fields do you want to edit? So we're going to hit that button. A new screen will pop up with, the, with our fields editable. I meant number 23. So we'll be able to change field 23. I meant to add a note. So we'll have a field to add the note. Then we'll click Save, and it'll change it. So that means visually we're going to need our screen that pops up with those fields. That means we'll start off with our HTML first to create a screen that lets us edit all of those fields. So we'll go back to uh, index.html. And we're going to need a brand new section to edit the comic info. We can use, again, the template that already exists and then change it up a little bit. I'm going to copy starting from the comment of my template 
to the end of the comment. So I'm going to copy all of that, paste it above itself, and we'll change a few things. This is now the start of uh, edit comic. It goes over to the end of edit comic. I'll keep data theme A. ID here, this is going to be a pop-up dialog box. So the syntax we've been using is that we preface it with pop, and then it'll be edit comic info. This whole section is about editing the comics, the, the info of the comic in question. So our top, we will say edit. Our heading one at the in the header. This is our screen where we're going to edit something. We don't need this nav bar, just like that other pop-up dialog box didn't need a nav bar. So let's remove nav. And we don't need that footer. That nav and that footer would be for a more full screen type of page. We can remove that. We've got this section. This is starting edit comic. Make sure you change that ID, pop edit comic info. So this particular comic, we need to present to the user the current version of the data so that they can decide to change it or not. So I want to show on screen the current data of this comic. We're going to do this via a form, because then we can have these form fields, these editable fields, for them to update the the data of the object, the comic object. This will have an ID so we can reference it via JavaScript. And we'll call this form edit comic info. We're going to create fields for each of those editable items. right? We've got the title of the comic, the number of the comic, the year of the comic, etc. So this is going to be a lot of redundant typing. So let me just write it this way first. right? We're going to edit the title and the number and the year and the publisher. the note We've got barcode um, barcode field image we will deal in a little bit of a different way a little later but I want to put these here because we've got to put all of this boilerplate we've got to put all of this standard code for these to be input fields 
Remember, this is ultimately a label. All right, we're going to need a label around that. Label. Labels. these have the ending label All of these are labels attached to input fields. And all of these are input fields except for notes. Notes is a text area. So we've got these labels and input fields, which we need to define these input fields, except a type of data of text or number, etc. So our title is of type text. The number of the comic is of type number. Remember, this is how we can limit what kind of data can be put into an input box. And it's really cool on the device, because when you go into a field that only accepts a number, it only shows you numbers on the, key, on the keyboard. The year is also a number. Publisher is text. put a placeholder on each of these just to guide the user uh, what they should type here comic name placeholder here we can say like 300 placeholder year as well Publisher, we can say comic 
publisher. Are we going to insert the, the current record data into this form? Yes. Yeah, whatever the one we're currently editing will be inserted here eventually. So these are just in case you choose to delete the data that you have in that field and just return to the placeholder value? No, the placeholder value doesn't do anything. It's just visual for the user. Um, but it's going to be populated with the data from that record that they're trying to edit. Yeah. If they didn't put anything into Publisher, it would say Comic Publisher, and it would be empty for when we submit. Just something to display. So a label is attached to an input field. This is where we've got the for attribute of label. And what's it being used for? A particularly named input. And then it has an ID. So we've got label for. in title edit. This is the version of the <coughs> input field of the title, the one that we're editing. So this label is going to be used for this input. So the input has a name that is the same as the for attribute. That's when this line is getting really long for you to see it all. But we've done something like this before. Equals quotes in title edit. I'm going to put it on the next line just so that you can see it. And it shouldn't matter because of the white space. But maybe just to be able to read it, I'm putting it on a separate line. That has an ID, and we'll do the exact same value. For the number, we'll do four in number edit and for year for in year edit. So it's going to be a lot of redundant typing just to set it up. And then we'll move over to the JavaScript to make it work. So in number edit is a label that is used for the input field with a name of in number edit. And it also has an ID in number edit. Label for the year is along those lines in year edit. being used for an element of type a type element with a name the same and an ID the same Publisher as well. In Publisher Edit, name in Publisher Edit, and ID in Publisher Edit.
the note very similar. Yes. Yes, the autocomplete was guiding me astray. ID. Thank you. Four. In notes edit. On our text area, I didn't put a placeholder, but we we could also. But importantly, we've got the name and the ID. code in barcode edit with a name and a four and the ID so again like I said I wasn't kidding this is gonna be a little redundant but uh, logically I think it makes sense in barcode edit that's an input placeholder or uh, that one's also got a type. What's our type here? That's um, we're safer. We're safe to put here text because some barcodes have numbers and some barcodes have text. So we might as well be safe, and that should be of type text. text and a placeholder just put whatever and the uh, name and the ID We've got all of these fields that will be auto-populated based on the comic in question. The comic in question has that info screen where we see the data. Then we've got uh, delete and edit. We're clicking uh, edit to make this screen appear, and all of these will be filled in based on the comic in question. Well, in this screen, we would have its own cancel and save or cancel and update. We're trying to update the data. So before the end of the form, we've got some inputs that will be buttons. Specifically, well, in this case, um, instead of instead of the the reset or the cancel, we're going to use this as a plain old button because we need that to do a few things besides cancel to clean out the the form we need to cancel the operation of making an edit. So generic type of button, which needs a value so that we can say cancel on screen. And then ID, so we can reference it via JavaScript. So ID here, we'll do btn edit comic cancel. And then one more button to actually do the update. This one will be a type of submit.
with a value on screen of uh, update. So this is our form where we're going to edit the various fields of the comic. I'm going to save that. So we're going to uh, update. I'm going to click Spider-Man number one, and I never added a note the first time. So I'm going to click Edit. This will pop up. All of that will be filled in, Spider-Man number one, etc. And then I'm going to make a note and click Update. Question. It should, yeah. Oops, that's a good one there. Uh, yes, all of this should have been in the article. So if you put it in the right place, great. If you didn't notice, like me, well, it's an easy fix. Whoops, what I did was I put all of this form outside of the main article. No problem, we'll just move the article to the outside before the end of section. This would still probably look this would probably still show up, but look weird. We don't want that. So yes, all of this should be inside of the article. I'm going to cut that and paste it after the form. There we go. So that whole form should be inside the article. So I just moved um, where we had article h2 main, and uh, we don't really even need that main doesn't matter. So I won't have main anymore there. We don't need any H2. We want to just have the, the form itself. So just to confirm, I've got the, just to confirm I've got the article and then I've got the form inside the article of the section. We need to create JavaScript objects that represent the cancel button, submitting, when we make an update. So that's the form itself. And then also the button that starts the whole thing. Remember in the info, in the info screen there is delete and there is edit. So we're going to make JavaScript objects for that edit button uh, for the whole form so that we can check for submit and for the button to cancel. I'm going to save my HTML. Back to the JavaScript. And we'll go back to where we've got all of our, all of our object definitions. LBT and delete comic. We're going to then do LBT and edit comic, but slightly different. LBT and uh, edit comic prep. This is again another example where we have to prepare things a little bit. It doesn't do it straight ahead. LBT and edit comic preparation. That's equal to our selector.
found btn edit comic prep. Back on the HTML file, we've got our delete button with an ID of btn delete comic. And I'll triple check it, but we should have asked us to write it last time btn edit comic prep as the ID of the edit comic. And last time I said, uh, we'll write it like this at the moment uh, because it will be something that will need to be prepared. You, should, you can confirm that right here in the index HTML, where we've got our pop view comics info. We had btn delete comic ID and btn edit comic prep. So we did call it that. Obviously here, this is the first thing you'll look at if we're getting errors that the button doesn't work. Well, what is the ID called and what is, what is the reference to the object here? Okay, so we've got um, we've got an object representing the, the edit button. We need to make objects representing the um, the form itself and the cancel button. So var dollar l form edit comic info equal to Found form edit comic info. What we called that form a moment ago. Which was right here. Form edit comic info. And then there's that cancel button. Because we've got that button set as a generic button, it doesn't have anything inherent that it can do. And we don't want a reset, because that would only reset the, the fields, which is not what we want. We want to also cancel this box. This box has popped up. I don't want to actually edit anything. I want to cancel. So we want to close that dialog box. So we need to create an object for that cancel button. L, btn, cancel, or edit, cancel. Edit cancel. Let's confirm uh, BTN edit comic cancel. And that's referencing the object with the ID of BTN edit comic cancel. So there is the button that will start the whole process, the edit button. There is the, the form, so we can um, capture the submit, the submittal. And then there is the uh, cancel. We'll start with edit comic prep. That then needs an event listener. When a user clicks on that edit button, start the ball rolling. So where we've got all of those near the end of our code, we'll add a new listener. Save that and then scroll to the end. So LBTN delete comic. That's the one of a little bit ago. Next we've got LBTN comic prep on click as usual. On the event of a click. On the button to edit, we'll then run a function, function edit comic. Edit comic prep. Function edit comic prep.
So we'll just work with this one for the moment. The other ones are, will come up eventually. And so here now we've got a way to handle uh, what happens when we click that button. We're going to start function edit comic prep. Let's go back up where we've got our function definitions and create a definition of this new function. So backing up right here after function delete comic, I'm going to start a new function. As we've done again, and we, and we will do again, we'll do a little output here just to let us know that um, start of function edit comic prep. At the very least, if we see that, again, this is saying, well, we're on the right track. We're pressing the button. Something's happening. We're getting a reaction. If you're getting none of this reaction in the console, that would be the moment to stop and say, what did I name these? Do I have my objects named as, do I have my reference to that HTML element correct? Did I misspell it? Uppercase, lowercase, all of that. That several people have needed a little bit of a guiding with. Remember, uppercase, lowercase matters. Okay, so the way this is being prepped, the reason this is function edit comic prep, is because we've got this edit screen with empty input fields. We need to populate those input fields. When we press edit, fill in those fields and account for whatever person ever filled in a publisher. That would be easy to account for. But what we need to do is prepare that input field. Those input fields we made a moment ago, all of that label for, name, all of that junk, that's going to be filled in in this function. So the way this works is we have to, again, deal with um, the, the, function, uh, the, the comic in question. It'd be a good idea here also to, uh, on the console, say plus uh, temp comic to delete again this is when it's named to delete but we're borrowing it maybe if we named it a little bit more generically a while ago but this is the placeholder this is the variable that's holding on to which comic in question are we dealing with maybe we could have called atomic uh, temp comic in question that will be next time next semester <coughs> so this uh, this is representing the comic in question so we're about to we're about to prepare a comic in question. So this is going to be the same as when we deleted a comic. We have to first get. We have to first check. Does the comic exist? So in order for us to check if it exists and such, we need to start with db.get. And what we're trying to get is temp comic to delete, to 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 edit in question. Temp comic in question which will result in a function, an anonymous callback function of failure or success, as usual. You should see where we're going with this, where it's broken and it's got the if-else uh, end of get to check if comic in question exists with an if else to deal with failure or success
if end of if else checking for a comic and populating fields. That um, that uh, form where we're making updates, that form will also be auto-populated here once we confirm success. As we've usually done then under failure, console output. So we saw with um, delete, um, when we first do our get, what we get back from successful is the actual object itself. The, uh, all of the properties of the object we've tried to get. And those properties are title, and number, and year, and publisher, barcode, etc. So that one comic is represented in this whole object, success. Based on that, we can use that to populate those fields on screen. That's going to happen under else. We're going to reference the particular field and set its value to the particular property. So the, we're going to do the jQuery selector, quotes pound uh, in title edit dot val. We've used dot val before as is to read what was the value typed into a field. But we can also use val method to set the value of that field. So we've got an input field of editing the title. We're going to set that to the value of success.title. Success is, the, is that one comic, the whole data of that one comic, all of the properties of that object, title, year, etc. So using this exact same idea here, we will then populate the other fields in title edit, in number edit, in year edit, dot val, dot val, dot val, success dot year, success dot title, success dot barcode. So this is a little redundant as well here, but you get the idea in number edit. That's the ID we gave the field on the HTML. And we're setting the val, the value, based on success dot number. The number property of the success object, which is the number of the comic. Here, edit the the field where we edit the year. We set its val to success dot year. We've got publisher note and barcode.
and then the barcode. Pound in barcode edit.val success dot barcode. So the cool thing is, is this method can do both of those, reading or writing. Dot val can read the value of what's been typed into an input field. And if we provide a value, we can set the value of a particular input field. So in the sequence of all of this, the the speech bubble was pressed. The info screen appears. All of the fields that have been filled in for a comic appear. Then we've got edit or delete. We press edit. So the comic in question, all of this is filled into that. And lastly, well, we need to display that input, uh, that edit screen. So we'll do the same thing about this page container change, where we had this. I'm going to copy and paste it and change it a little bit. <coughs> where we did our mobile page container. I'm going to copy that same line, the, the current version, not the deprecated version of the code. And I'll paste it right after the, the if else that goes right after dot get. Which goes over to pop edit. Comics info, comic info, so this is after the end of get, uh, because within get is where we check if we've got the data put it on screen and then change change the view change the screen from our current pop-up to the new pop-up that we created pop edit comic info don't forget the pound sign right there we're going to change to that new screen roll dialogue And at this point, we can test it a little bit. We can save all of our files and simulate it or run it in your device. You can give it a shot. It should, uh, on any of these comics that you've made, you should be able to click the speech bubble and see that new screen appear with those fields filled in. Let me check if mine is on track, and then we'll, we'll go on. So we've got a brand new edit screen, and it filled in these items. I didn't have anything filled on the other ones. Let me fill in one here, very obviously. This is everyone's favorite comic, ZZZ, number 44, 1998, publisher ZZZ, notes ZZZ. So here's a brand new comic where I'm saving something, I'm viewing something. OK, I've got something to view. I click there. I'm going to go through the process of editing. Pops up. OK, we're about to edit the title, or the number, or the year, or the publisher, or the notes, or the barcode didn't do a barcode yet because we don't have the barcode scanner but it should pop up here these fields filled in cancel doesn't do anything yet update doesn't do anything yet well it kind of does but we need to prevent default or else it kicks me all the way out of the app doesn't yes, it, it to yeah because prevent default we, we don't have prevent default yet um, 
but that's coming on track. We get a second pop-up there. Eventually that will be updated and this will all be updated. That's coming up. So let's take our uh, next break. Let's see if it's working at this point. We'll go on.